Hello everyone and welcome to the Moto 901 Spotlight Video Series. My name is Pat Cranley and I'm going to be your guide over the next few hours as we explore the new features in Moto 901. As you can see here, we're going to focus all of our attention on the creation of this fun little rocket ship scene. Through this project, we'll learn about the new additions to the modeling and UV and tool set. We'll also take a look at the enhancements to the sculpting engine and the new project is complete without a little animation. So we'll get our little rocket ship to take off and look at some of the new features in the dynamic system as well. Finally, we'll wrap up this project by examining the enhancements to the rendering engine. I've navigated down to the bottom of my rocket ship, and as you can see, we need an opening for the engine of my rocket ship. So I need to add some additional geometry into my fusion item that I can subtract from the shape to get the opening that I'm after. To do this, we're going to work inside the Cubic Geometry Mesh Preset Library. You can get access to all, the, all these lovely mesh presets over here in your fusion tools, and here's the button right here in our interface. It's called Cubic Geometry. If you click on it, you'll get this lovely little popover that shows all the different mesh presets that come with mesh fusion these items are fantastic as you can see there's a there's a full spectrum of shapes that we can instantly integrate into any fusion item they're already created entirely out of Catmull Clark subdivision surfaces and they're ready to go to be inserted into a fusion item we're gonna use this guy this little cylinder I'll double click on it to add it into our scene I'll dismiss the popover and begin placing this cylinder where I want it to go I'm in item mode so I want to move this element up and then I want to scale it down once I'm happy with the overall size, and that's a good start, I'm going to left click and drag on this item onto the red dot, which represents the subtraction operator inside of my fusion item. So I'll left click, drag it onto the red dot. After it thinks about it for a second, you can see that the computer has subtracted the contents of that cylinder from my fusion item, and everything is looking good. New in 901, if we go to the deform collection of tools, at the bottom we have some alignment tools, and we now can uh, radially and linearly align vertices. Let's check it out. I'm going to run radial. I'll click in the viewport to apply the tool, and there we go. Now all these verts have been moved into a perfect circle, and it is a perfect circle, which is pretty fantastic. In addition, there are some tool options that you should be made aware of. Of course, the angle will allow you to start to twist that thing. The radius will allow you to grow or shrink that. I think I'm going to put mine at like, uh, oh, maybe one. 160 it looks pretty good and then the smooth excuse me the weight will allow you to basically return those verts to their original position so some feathering uh, can be done if you don't want a perfect circle which is kind of nice awesome the UDIM indicator is an interactive selection, edit, and creation tool inside of our UDIM workflow. It's very, very neat. We can place our UDIM basically within any UDIM that we want by returning to our tools and changing the current location of our UDIM indicator. I'm going to move it over to UDIM 2, and you can see that our indicator jumps to that tile. One of the other great things about this indicator is that we can use it to select edit and move the UVs that are currently inside of that UDIM. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And let's use this breadcrumb. Even though we're on, working on a, a relatively uh, low polygonal mesh, these little, these little additions can give us some wonderful, wonderful little high frequency noise going across my mesh in my model. And I just really enjoy them. It's a fast way to give a little visual interest. What happens is when people are sculpting for the first time, everything looks kind of lumpy. And uh, some, some of this high frequency noise really does a good job of going in and breaking up these planes and giving us a little bit more. Okay, I love it. And now we can dial it in some. Maybe it's too much. So I'll go down to 20%. And that's a good starting point. Well, let's see what it looks like at 50%. I like 50% a whole lot better. So now that we have everything cut up and sliced, it's time to get these uh, shards as active participants inside of our dynamic simulation. So now we have to go through and select all of the contents of the folders, and let's just do it real fast. I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom uh, of my Launchpad folder, shift click, and uh, I'm gonna apply these all as active rigid bodies, because remember, I want these to fall and crumble and land on the top of the lifter. So let's go ahead and add the active rigid bodies. There we go. It's going to take a second. There's a bunch of them that needs to calculate. So let the computer think. Awesome. Let me just triple check. I selected one here and then over in my properties tab that I, I can see that it has its own series of dynamic properties. Rock and roll. That's exactly what we want. Let me cruise back up to the top, collapse the folder, and do the exact same thing for all my leg pieces. Just make them active rigid bodies. Give it a second to think. Cool. All right. So let's just uh, let's just play around with this. Let's just see what this looks like as is without any sort of dialing. I'm going to run the simulation, and uh, let's just take a look at what we got here. 
I've cached my simulation data and I'm playing my animation from the timeline just so we get a better representation in OpenGL of what the final result looks like. And here it is, it's looking pretty fantastic. I'm liking it. You can see that my concrete table is just kind of falling and collapsing on top of the lifter, which is exactly what I want. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. As you can see, all the pieces are falling, they're collapsing into a pile of where I'm spending my most attention on is the quality of the of the specular highlight. Look at that. I think this is just absolutely fantastic over here in the physical base. It's it's just it's it, it's a it's a much more closer reproduction in my imagination to what I'm after. Okay. Um, and if you look at the quality of the reflections just across the entirety of the surface, the physical, in my opinion, just grabs the environment a little bit differently and it gives me a little bit more punch. I just I just really enjoy it. I think it's a it's a nice addition to the model, the shading model that we find in Moto. It's not a replacement of the other two, it's just an alternative that we need to look at when trying to choose the aesthetics that we're after in the reproduction of our scenes. One of the first things you'll notice about the advanced viewport is the fact that so many more material options are supported for display, such as specular color, layered images with blending modes, and even gradients for surfaces can now be displayed. I'm using an incident gradient here on the ground. Take a look at the Fresnel on the rocket. It's so much more accurate and lifelike now. Most notable, it's going to mimic the look of the all-new physically based shader, giving a much more accurate specular shape and fall off. Now I've been told that this is just the first step, with even more to come, but what we have now is sure to improve everyone's workflow.